just want to let you all know that I've seen all your messages and tweets and comments and all that stuff since I did, you know, the Flash and Arrow a little while ago. So, rounding out my little CW DC Arrowverse mini series thing, I thought I would take a look at the third big superhero drama on the CW, also one of the most recent, whatever that's worth, which is of course, Supergirl. But before that, really quick, this video is sponsored by Scribe. Scribe is a service that lets you read ebooks, magazines, articles, academic papers, and or listen to tons of audiobooks, all for just $8.99 a month. Seriously, for less than $9 a month, you get unlimited access to any ebook or audiobook you want. Let me give you an example here. The Kindle version of the book for the new movie Love Simon is $10.99 on Amazon. But for just $8.99, you can get the ebook, the audiobook, and thousands of other similar titles, or you know, whatever kind of books you want. So if you love to read or you know, just looking for something to make your commutes to school or work a little more bearable, click on the link in my description, check out Scribed. I think you're gonna like it. Okay, back to the show. The show starts out like really any superhero show with our main character backstory. She is Superman's cousin, who is also supposed to be sent to Earth to watch over him, but her spaceship gets thrown into the Phantom Zone, and she gets stuck in time for 24 years, but eventually makes it to Earth. My cousin wanted me to have the same safe, human-type childhood he did. So he placed me with my adoptive family, the Danvers. I know I'm not your mom, sweetheart, but you're safe here. They had a daughter, Alex. And despite being born on different planets, we both shared one thing. We both had a really unhealthy amount of One Direction merchandise, but of course none of it means anything anymore because they all broke up, so thanks for nothing, guys! Now one thing I thought was kind of interesting here, compared to like pretty much any other superhero show or movie or like whatever, is that she doesn't lose her memory or suddenly get struck by lightning or whatever. Like right from the get-go, she knows exactly who she is, what her powers are, all that stuff. And it's kind of refreshing, you know, at least to me. Anyway, since the world already has Superman, and you know, he doesn't really need anyone to look after him, she decides that she would rather live a normal life. I need two tickets in the orchestra section for Wicked? No, not for Miss Grant. Her mother wants to see it. Yes, again. Sure, I'll hold. Charlie? I'm, uh, I'm calling about the correspondence dinner. I need to make sure Miss Grant doesn't end up next to Bill O'Reilly again. I work at Catco Worldwide Media an online and print empire built by my boss, Cat Grant. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Online and print? Okay, forget the whole Alien Planet Phantom Zone thing. This is the most fantastical, unbelievable part of the entire show, okay? Who works in print anymore? What are you printing? Menus for Cracker Barrel? So that particular day at work, there's a new photographer in the office who just so happens to be friends with Clark Kent, AKA Superman. Oh my god, you're Jimmy Olsen, the photographer from the Daily Planet. James Olsen. Well, Jimmy's reserved for my mom and the big guy. He's kind of stuck in his ways. Um, I, I know what I've read, but... What's he like in real life? Ugh, don't even get me started. First of all, his hands are always wet. Dude sweats like a sumo wrestler playing Dance Dance Revolution. And he always has gummy worms in his pocket, but he only eats the red ones. Dude's a total weirdo. That night, Kara, that's the main character's name by the way, has a date with a total douche, and in the middle, realizes that her sister's plane is about to crash. So, you know, it sounds like a win-win to me. Now, being Supergirl and all that, she finally takes off the burden of being a normal person and lets her true colors fly. That night, she goes home to her totally affordable apartment and watches herself on the news. And while she's a little bit excited, her sister feels a different way. I'm not sure what comes next. Or maybe I am sure and I'm just afraid of what it means and if it means what I think it means. What were you thinking? You exposed yourself. Hey, whoa, okay, this is hardly the time for shaming, all right, okay, besides, we have way more important issues to deal with, like, I just flew through the air at supersonic speed and my hair isn't even dry yet, like, how does that even work? What's the government putting in our water? The next day, she's still all over the news, and gosh darn it, just can't keep it to herself anymore. So, she takes little friend's own Freddy over here up to the roof and tells him the secret she's been keeping deep inside for far too long. Can I trust you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Good. Um, I uh, just, I really want someone to be excited for me. And I, um, wait, how do, uh, 
There is something about me that for most of my life, I've run from it. But last night, I embraced who I am and I don't want to stop. I, I, I think Beyonce's music is maybe a little overrated. What did you say? Beehive. Attack. Now we flash sideways to this scruffy looking dude who we find out is responsible for trying to crash Kara's sister's plane. What happened with the plane, Bartox? You were ordered to bring it down. Our trap worked. The DEO agents were on board and the bomb detonated. Then why aren't they dead? The female. You know, the way he says the female, I don't know, it just cracks me up. The female. With her hairpins and her bras and her cooties. <gasps> circle, circle, dot, dot. Safe. Anyway, now that her friend knows that she's Supergirl, Kara and whatever his name is decide to work together to help her do more superhero stuff, like fighting crime or like whatever. She's heavenly. <clears throat> So, uh, to be a superhero, you need a crime. I hacked into the NCPD. There's a car chase on the 112 freeway. While trying to stop one of these aforementioned crimes, Kara gets captured by a government agency that specializes in keeping track of aliens, which you think wouldn't give them a whole lot to do, but they seem to have the most incredible budget. You're the reason for all of this. Me? But my... But my cousin was here two dozen years before me. And it was his arrival that triggered the need for this organization. We realized we weren't alone in the universe and we might soon be getting more immigrants. Sure enough, you came along. Oh, and also, by the way, Kara's sister, Alex, works for this department. Just a little plot point there, no big deal. And we find out that when Kara came to Earth, she brought a whole prison full of supervillains along with her. Don't you just hate it when that happens? We're not sure how your pod got loose. What we do know is this. You pulled Fort Ross with you. And you brought them here. These beings, some of them are powers from your darkest nightmares. So you're telling me they can make my teeth fall out, make spiders crawl out of my mouth, and give me the final exam for a class I suddenly realized I never actually went to? That's an awfully specific superpower. After some back and forth with the dude in charge being all like, no, you're too young to fight the bad guys, and then Carrie's like, uh, I have super strength and I can fly, and then the head guy's like, oh yeah, my bad. She goes off to meet the guy who said, the female, earlier in the show. Oh, and ever so conveniently, this guy has a battle axe that can just magically, conveniently hurt Kara because, you know, tension. <laughs> You know, there's a joke just sitting right there that I'm not going to touch, but you all can just feel free to talk amongst yourselves on that one. Anyway, Kara's sister somehow understands everything about this unique, never-before-seen, one-of-a-kind alien battle axe, and Kara wins. Yay. That night, Alex brings Kara a lost message from her mother that was sent with her in her little spaceship dealy thingamabob. Mom. Kara, my brave daughter. By now you have become the woman I knew you would grow up to be. You knew I was gonna be delivering coffee and sandwiches for a living? Well, gee, thanks for the confidence, Mom. Glad you had some big dreams for me. And finally, it's revealed that the leader of the group of bad dudes is none other than Supergirl's aunt. Find her and kill her. Are you certain, General? After all, Kara's or L is your blood. No one can be allowed to stand against us. Not even my niece. You know, I harp on a lot of shows. I, you know, I poke fun here and there, tell some jokes, and we all have a giggle. But of the three superhero shows I've done so far, you got The Flash, Arrow, and now Supergirl, I actually enjoyed this one the most. I mean, Arrow is just all over the place. The Flash is fine, I guess. And while this show can be a little heavy-handed with its message, I thought it was by far the most enjoyable of the three. Now, don't get me wrong. It's, it's goofy and cheesy and all that. But I mean, eh, I had fun, I guess. Hey everybody, thanks for watching really quick. The Superpower Collection is in the store. You got men's, women's, and babies like Superman, Superwoman, Supergirl kind of thing going on. So if you're interested, check it out. Use the code ALEX24 for free worldwide shipping, guys, anywhere in the world. It's only available for a limited time, so just check it out if you're interested. So rounding out the third of these kind of DC, like, CW shows or whatever, of the three that I've done, I, I did enjoy Supergirl the most, just because, like, I mean, The Flash and Supergirl are both really, like, lighthearted. Like, Arrow is just... I mean, I didn't want to get into it, but man, that show is just something else. 
But, you know, Flash and Supergirl kind of have like a similar type of thing. But I did enjoy Supergirl a little bit more just because she was kind of the most believable character, I guess, of them all. You know, like with the Flash, it's like, you know, he's like this super like genius guy. And then he also gets struck by lightning. And then it's kind of this... This kind of this like we I, I don't know how to describe it, but just like as a character he was kind of kind of like cliche in a way and then Supergirl it's like she really was just like a regular person but she already had her powers so like the approach was very different it's kind of like Spider-Man 1 versus like Spider-Man 3 in a way where it's like Spider-Man 1 he was a regular dude who got his powers and then Spider-Man like 2 and 3 you know he has to deal with them trying to be a regular dude while having powers and I like that approach a little bit more um, just because, I mean, how many origin stories can you do in a superhero show, really? H- how many can you sit there before you know them all by heart? <laughs> you know, I mean, every origin story is exactly the same. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. I try to reply to everything I get. So if you want to send me a message, just go right ahead. Follow my dog, Charlie, on Instagram. Charlie Meets Pumpkin. My wife posts there every single day. So you get a little Charlie in your life every time you wake up or go to sleep or whatever time it is for you. I'm streaming on you now, so follow me there. The download link is in the description. Check out you now. I stream there every Thursday. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all next time.